morning to all i welcome all the participants for the second days of the e faculty or student development program yesterday we had an excellent session by dr a vasudevara garu e learning lead senior lecturer department of chemistry international medical university malaysia on online collaborative learning and morning student to engagement all. using e learning welcome strategies welcome all the participants Today, for the second days of the e faculty speaker, dr koteshwara nalamaul garu assistant professor of pharmacology college of pharmacy california health sciences university usa to deliver to deliver a talk on exosomes improve sensory and motor functions in ischemic stroke induced rats welcome sir Thank you. I, uh, I request our principal sir, Dr. K. E. V. Nagoji Karu, to hand over the session. Okay. Thank you, Padma Sri Madam. Respected Management of Vikas Education Society, Dr. B. Sri Ramuthi sir, Dr. I. Sankara sir, Dr. B. V. S. Muthi sir, and I. S. V. C. Director. I Kishore sir and uh, coordinators, our faculty, um, um, participant, all the participants. A very good morning to all of you, and a warm welcome to our today's eminent speaker, Dr. N Kote sir, uh, to today's session. And on behalf of our management. faculty and uh, myself a warm welcome to all the participants and today's eminent speaker dr a vasudevara sir and first of all let me thank our management and iscc director i kishore garu for their continuous support to conduct this e faculty and student development program so today that is on day 2 our eminent uh, speaker dr n koteshwar sir assistant professor of pharmacology california health sciences university usa will deliver a speech on exosomes improve sensory and motor functions in ischemic stroke induced rats so i think uh, this topic is very very important topic and that is very useful to all the participants both students and the faculty so uh, a warm welcome kote sir garu and a very good morning to you of course it is good evening to you there whatever it may be now i request our iscc director kishor garu to address the participants sir kishor sir hello a very good morning to uh, all the participants uh, firstly i would like to um, sincerely thank dr kodeshwar garu for ac accepting his our request and uh, spending his valuable time uh, to share a few inputs on the topic today uh, and uh, the session really went well yesterday and uh, uh, there was a lot of knowledge shared uh, for all these uh, four days in the webinars and i'm so, so i'm hoping all the participants would uh, definitely gain a lot of uh, knowledge out of these uh, sessions and uh, i wish you all the best so uh, i'm i'm just hoping today's session will i'm 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 pretty sure that today's session will be great and uh, uh, you will be taking a lot out of it thank you now uh now i hand over the session to dr uh, k rajarajeshwari madam to introduce our speaker today's speaker over to rajarajeshri madam good morning all of you today i got the opportunity to introduce our eminent speaker dr n koteshwar sir who is currently holding the position as assistant professor of pharmacology in college of pharmacy california health sciences university usa dr n koteshwar sir has completed his graduation from nagarjuna university in 1998 and m pharmacy in pharmacology from andhra university in 2000 and 
He has been awarded PhD in 2007 in the specialization of natural sciences from Acharya Nagarjuna University, India. Sir has started his career as lecturer in Geetam Dental College in 2002. So after his PhD, he got the opportunity to work as senior lecturer in UAC SI University, Malaysia, and also worked as associate dean in the Taylor's University, Malaysia. In 2016, as a visiting scholar, he stepped into the University of Illinois College of Medicine, USA, and become as research collaborator and also as instructor and promoted as research assistant professor there. So in recently in 2020, he got the opportunity to work as assistant professor in California Health Sciences University, USA. He has participated in so many international conferences and received awards for his research papers and also delivered the national and international talks in India, USA and Singapore. He has research publications in top most reputed journals like Neuromolecular Medicine, Cellular Physiology and Biochemistry and Neuroscience and so many other journals also. For his in-depth research contribution, Sir has got so many awards and honors like Sudhir Bhukta Young Scientist Award in 2020 and also DRL Junior Scientist Award in 2018 and also has Best Lecturer Award from Taylor's University in Malaysia in 2015 and also the eminent Professor ML Khorana Memorial Award in 2004. Sir also had the mentorship for so many research students involving in the research contribution from 2012 onwards and he also trained the students in the departments of medicine, biotech and pharmacy fields. And he has a professional memberships also for the so many associations like uh, American Heart Association and also as uh, Association of Scientists of Indian Origin in America and in India as IPA, IIPTA and also a membership for Control Release Society. We, are, we call it as CRS and also as Indian Pharmacological Society and also the highly reputed apps, American Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists and also Indian Pharmacological Society. So with this small introduction, I want to hand over the session to principal sir. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Rajaraj Sri Madam. Uh, now I request uh, our uh, eminent speaker, and Dr. Ann Koteswara Garu, to carry on the speech. Power to Koteswara, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to Sri Venkateswara College of Pharmacy, uh, management and principal, Dr. K. Vinagoji, uh, sir. And uh, I'm fortunate to deliver this lecture with my <clears throat> I worked in Barampur uh, in my first job. He was my colleague there. Um, I'm happy that you in, uh, you invited me to deliver a talk in your college. And thanks for a great introduction about me. Um, let's start the topic. I want to deliver exosomes um, uh, neurological functional improvement. What is uh, exactly stroke? Uh, stroke is uh, a cerebral uh, accident in which uh, there may be blood clot, there may be a rupture of blood vessel. If there is a blood clot, blood clot is due to uh, formation of uh, a clot due to thromboembolism or atherosclerotic mediated clot. So this clot uh, where it is it is uh, shown now blocks the blood flow from one side to other side of the uh, bra uh, artery. So artery could not supply the glucose and oxygen required for the brain cells viability. When brain cells did not get oxygen and glucose, they start dying. There are lots of mechanisms evoked. This kind of stroke is called as ischemic stroke. If there is a, a rupture in blood vessel, it leaks the blood onto where the adjacent site of the brain cells. 
when the blood leaks onto the blood cell, brain cells, the brain cells uh, become hypoxic and hypoglycemic because uh, that starts, uh, um, there is no blood flow to that region. Due to that, <clears throat> the blood, the brain cell starts dying, which is called as stroke. This stroke is hemorrhagic stroke. So these two types of strokes are uh, dangerous. You need uh, immediate reaction. You have to carry the patient immediately to emergency department. Otherwise, it can uh, cause loss of various functions to coma to death. So I want to work on the uh, uh, stroke uh, so I was finding uh, where can I work in neuroscience lab. Then I found uh, University of Illinois. They gave me an opportunity to work as a visiting scholar. We started the, um, I joined them. Then I started working in uh, stroke research projects. So this stroke, what happens when, when a person gets stroke? There will be face drooping on one side. There will be weakness on the arms, speech difficulty, sometimes there will be slurred speech, sometimes a uh, person can't even talk. If any person observes these conditions together, or at least uh, uh, face drooping or two of the conditions simultaneously, immediately take the person to emergency department and uh, enable treatment as soon as possible. That is important. I will explain why in my later slides. Why we have to work on a stroke? Why we have to find something for stroke? It is the second leading cause of death worldwide. We all assume that uh, accidents, diabetes, heart attacks, uh, hypertension, these are the major causes of death are uh, infections like COVID right now but stroke is the second leading cause of death. One out of every 20 deaths uh, is due to stroke in the United States. The major problem with stroke is long-term disability. Long-term disability stunts the uh, person's uh, normal functions and actions, including work. This is a great concern. We have to uh, either prevent the stroke or we are after stroke, we have to treat, bring back the patient to near normal. We can't bring it, bring anyone to normal after stroke, at least near normal is possible. That's what we believed in. So we want to work on stroke. Why I'm concerned with long-term disability? If a person suddenly can't walk, can't perform his normal functions, if he is the breadwinner of the family, the family is under economical crisis immediately. Second, the, if, if the person have these kind of disabilities, a caregiver must be associated with that patient 24 hours a day. So even to feed, even to uh, do normal functions, uh, facilitate normal functions, they need a caregiver, which is another uh, problem for the family. So long-term disability is a, may, is a great concern. We have to uh, look into that and we have to do something for it. And uh, every 40 seconds a stroke case is reported. Why? What is the reason? The major reasons, uh, risk factors for stroke is uh, obesity. We, can, we, we are greatly concerned with obesity, hypertension, diabetes are the major risk factors for stroke. Every four minutes, someone dies due to stroke. 600,000 means six lakhs over new patients are joining into hospital every year and uh, costs were 70 over billion dollars in 2012 and the projection is 180 over billion dollars in 2030. You can imagine this much money is just, they are spending for stroke treatment. What about the caregivers? What about the hospital uh, and family 
and his work loss it can be more than 180 billion dollars it can be more than 300 or 500 uh, over billion dollars we are to uh, look into it then we got a uh, we <coughs> search literature which stroke is major which stroke is dangerous which stroke is having lots of problems we found that 87 percent of strokes are ischemic strokes <coughs> and and uh, good or bad i don't know i have to tell this um, if anybody got ischemic stroke their survival chances are a lot but the long-term disability is the major problem in ischemic strokes whereas in hemorrhagic strokes when blood leaks into the areas the fatality chances are very high 90 to 95 percent of the hemorrhagic stroke patients can't survive that's the uh, heavy dangerous uh, uh, concern about hemorrhagic stroke so we wanted to work on ischemic strokes um, because hemorrhagic strokes, even doctors can't able to um, uh, work on for survival of the patients. So we wanted to work on ischemic stroke, which is causing long-term disability. So we choose ischemic strokes as, a, as our research area. So from now, whatever I am talking about is just about ischemic stroke and its uh, relieving functions. So what is uh, this illustration shows time is valuable in this case time is very valuable the moment a patient had stroke immediately the patient has to be in hospital in emergency department in united states uh, but normally if this kind of uh, strokes occur a helicopter or an ambulance will drive to the home and pick up and get it the, get into the emergency department within 30 to 30 minutes to an hour as soon as possible that is important as the time goes on the loss will not be retrievable it will be too intense so what is this when there is a ischemic stroke there is a lack of blood flow to a particular region. Apoptosis induced cell death mediates uh, damage to the brain cells. So cells already dead. This region we call it as core. And this region uh, where the adjacent region to the core is called as penumbra. Penumbra is still alive, but uh, it is also going to die if we don't do anything, then the infarction area will be much more enlarged and the intensif intensified loss of functions will be observed. What is the treatment available uh, till now? There is only one drug, tissue plasminogen activator, approved by FDA long, long ago. So what is this tissue plasminogen activator uh, uh, mechanism? Tissue plasminogen activator converts plasminogen into plasmin. This plasmin cleaves the fibrin mediated clots into small particles, which we call it as fibrin degradation products. When the clot is broken into small particles, that will be dissolved automatically and uh, blood flow starts normally to the ischemic region. So when blood flow is reinforced, we call it as reperfusion. Remember this, reperfusion and ischemia. Ischemia is the clot is formed, which could not able to provide oxygen and glucose to the other side of the cells. That is called ischemia. When we cleave the clot, when we break the clot, we reinforce the blood flow that is called as reperfusion. You remember that uh, in the further, in the forthcoming slides, I'll be talking a lot about that. So available uh, drug treatment is only until 4.5 hours of stroke incident. What is what is uh, this? 
you need to bring the patient within 4.5 hours into the emergency department and within 4.5 hours of the stroke span this drug should be injected then only it is efficient someone asked me what 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 happens if i give it after 8 hours a day later what is going to happen it will cause rupture of blood vessel and leaking of blood into the various regions several blood vessels will rupture if you give after 5 hours of span the re, the, that leads to hemorrhagic stroke and patient will die if you don't give tpa after 5 hours at least patient will survive there is a surgery called thrombectomy or uh, uh um angioplasty like a uh, kind of surgeries we can do we can remove the clot using surgical methods but don't give tpa after 4.5 hours to patient that will cause loss to so much loss and uh, damage to the brain cells so why are you going to work again when tpa is available why you want to do research why you want to find a new therapeutic option TPA only cleans the clot and it will reinforce the blood flow reperfusion will be facilitated but it doesn't control any ongoing brain damage it uh, it will not bother about secondary damage which is due to acute inflammation so first damage is already there the core is already dead the dead cells are there tpa can't do anything after reperfusion so many inflammatory mediators enter through the blood and uh, starts damaging further secondary that is called as secondary damage even tpa can't control it that is one of the problem tpa never ever retrieve back lost cells in brain so either neurons or brain cells can't be retrieved due to tpa tpa has no effect on lost motor and sensory functions so we have to bother about them even though tpa is good it is cleaving the clot it is facilitating the perfusion at least it is saving some more cells uh, otherwise if you don't cleave the clot majority of the brain cells will die so it is at least saving them so our objective is we wanted to find something which can retrieve the lost functions so motor and sensory functions means movement motor is movement we have to uh, bring back the movement in a patient otherwise patient can't able to walk can't able to perform his normal uh, activities sensory functions also if they are lost we have to bring them back so we searched literature what what we can do then um, everybody is interested in stem cell therapy so we chose stem cells and uh, we tested them in male and female uh, rats and we found that stem cells are having greater benefit uh, in ischemic stroke treatment we found that uh, stem cell could improve neurological functions and um, Uh, is there any changes uh, or difference between male and female no stem cell therapy uh, is very effective in both and male and female uh, rats stroke induced rats that's what we found we uh, presented this in international stroke conference um, in um, and uh, then what happened is we found that stem cell therapy is not our uh, feasible uh, therapy therapeutic option because stem cells are macromolecules blood brain barrier won't allow them to pass through uh, unless the blood brain barrier is disrupted stem cells can't enter in our in our research blood brain barrier was damaged after one day then we injected after one day stem cells and we found some therapeutic benefit but uh, you can't tell uh, uh, the patient that wait and wait for a day then i'll give you stem cells it may go it may not go depending on your blood brain barrier integrity and uh, we don't guarantee you therapeutic benefit um, it's not a great option 
and stem cell therapy sometimes can lead to malignancy and uh, immuno rejection problems are a lot with stem cell therapy so we found stem cells secrete a uh, certain benefit beneficial contents they named as exosomes they are nothing but stem cell secreted products so what is the benefit with exosomes over stem cells exosomes are micromolecules they just contain it contain some protein micro rnas long non coding rnas and which are having greater therapeutic benefit and highly compatible no need of immunological no immunological reactions no malignancy problems so we need we we are interested in exosomes but uh, what kind of exosomes you want to give <clears throat> there we struck we brainstorm what we decided is we want to prepare three types of exosomes exosomes from normal stem cells exosomes undergone uh, sorry stem cells undergone hypoxic conditions and uh, we allow uh, them to again regrow for two days the stem cells undergone uh, hypoxia and regrow two days then we collected exosomes from there we induced oxygen glucose deprivation to stem cells and we seeded uh, fresh stem cells on it and we found uh, we want we incubated for another 2 days we collected exosomes so there are three types one is normal one is hypoxic uh, uh, exosomes one is oxygen glucose deprivation exosomes what is oxygen glucose deprivation it is nothing but stroke mimicking stroke is nothing but oxygen and glucose deprivation so here also we mimicked stroke in in vitro environment and we say we cultured fresh stem cells on it and we collected the exosomes we want to see three we have three products now we want to see all the three acts in the same way or is there any therapeutic difference that's what we want to test so we synthesized normal exosomes we culture we selected human umbilical cord blood derived mesenchymal stem cells we named it as hucbmss <clears throat> it is supplied by a vendor and uh, we plated 1.5 million cells per petri dish 100 mm plate and we plated uh, six plates like that and we added the suitable media msc grow low serum complete media maintained them at 37 degrees with 5% carbon dioxide in an incubator and when they are uh, uh, settled down after 12 hours we changed the media uh, uh, we uh, withdrawn this msc grow media and added 6 ml of fbs containing uh exosome depleted fbs containing dmem what is this fetal bovine serum fbs contains exosomes so we do if we culture using fetal bovine serum alone these exosomes of fetal bovine serum will be mixed with stem cell secreted exosomes we don't want that so we purchased exosome free fbs and that fbs is added to dmem media and 6 ml of that media is added to the plates and uh, cultured for 24 hours and after 24 hours we just collected the media we don't want stem cells we want the stem cell secreted content where is that it is in the media so we collected the media after 24 hours and centrifuged at uh, uh, 2000 grams 30 minutes and we the debris cell debris whatever is there is collected at the bottom so we wanted to discard the debris we just collected the supernatant clear liquid uh, without disturbing that debris and um, then we added a exosome isolation reagent purchased from in vitro gen how much uh, reagent you have to add for 1 ml of the clear supernatant you need to add 0.5 ml of the reagent so whatever is the volume 6 ml 5 ml you just uh, calculate and add it and uh, vortex it and incubate 
two to eight degrees uh, in a normal uh, fridge, two to eight, two to eight degrees overnight. Then we collected back ten thousand grams for one hour uh, at uh, in a four degree centrifuge. We use that. We don't use normal centrifuge because exosomes can be degraded at the temperature. So we use two to eight degrees centrifuge, and then uh, we discarded the supernatant and exosomes are present in the pellet at the bottom. That pellet is uh, resuspended either, uh, we used a 1x phosphate buffered saline to dissolve it. So we preserved in minus 20 degrees centigrade uh, freezer for further studies. Hypoxic exosomes, uh, they are, uh, uh, is, the process is same, but a little bit difference is there in the process. We seeded uh, 1.5 million stem cells in 100 mm plate, as I told earlier, and uh, same media, same incubation. Uh, and after 12 hours, we added the DMEM DMEM media, uh, which is containing exosome depleted FPS. Then we plate we placed the plates in a hypoxic chamber where there will be 5% carbon dioxide and uh, the other percentage is with nitrogen and only 5%, 2 to 5% oxygen will be present inside. Previously, uh, when we incubated only 5% carbon dioxide and 95% of oxygen was there. But now only 2 to 5% of oxygen is inside. This chamber, in this chamber, we kept the plates, we induced the hypoxia and uh, the hypoxia was sustained for three hours. After three hours, we took back the plates and we took back the uh, plates and added another 0.5 million fresh stem cells to it. And uh, hypoxic exosome isolation, after uh, 24 hours um, of the time, we took back the media and we did the same process like centrifuge and discard the debris, collect the supernatant, add the exosome isolation reagent, vice versa, and collect that the pellet and dissolve with 1x phosphate buffered saline and preserved in minus 20. This is the story of hypoxic exosomes. Here, the difference is we induced hypoxia for three hours and we just added a fresh 0.5 million cells and we uh, collected it, that's all. In OGD exosomes, what happened is um, we added uh, 1 million cells uh, to the plate. In Previously, we added 1.5 million cells. Here, 1 million cells were added and plated, incubated. After 12 hours, we replaced the media with glucose-free DMEM media. It should not have any glucose. That's what we want to deprive the cells with hypoglycemia, Hypo, hypoglycemia and hypoxia. Here, glucose is taken out. Uh, those plates were placed in a hypoxic chamber. We induced hypoxia for three hours. That means hypoxia and hypoglycemia are induced for three hours. So oxygen glucose deprivation is occurred here. Then after three hours, media is replaced with uh, uh, exosome-free FBS uh, DMEM uh, with glucose now. We don't want to deprive any more with glucose. We added glucose containing media and uh, we added 0.5 million fresh cells to that. And exosomes uh, are isolated by the above described procedure. So we are ready with exosomes. Uh, minus 20 freezer have normal exosomes, hypoxic exosomes, oxygen glucose deprivation condition mimicked uh, cultured exosomes. So somebody asked, uh, definitely will ask you, hey, come on, you told all the, uh, you described everything. What is the guarantee that there is exosomes in your uh, uh, a dissolved uh, solution. We ran Western blots. CD9, CD63, CD81 are the markers, characterization markers for exosomes. So 
So for normal exosomes, we ran CD63. We found the bands uh, indicating that exosomes are present in the normal exosome content. And when we induced a hypoxia, uh, sorry, oxygen glucose deprivation, the stem cells normally looks like this. After oxygen glucose deprivation, the stem cells are uh, under definite crisis. That's the glow is so much means they are under crisis and they are almost in a death uh, live condition. So we could see a differentiation between them. And we also characterized, uh, we also want to test whether there is oxygen glucose deprivation occurred or not. We have created the chamber. We have induced oxygen glucose deprivation. Somebody says, is it yes or no? How do you confirm that? HIF 1 alpha is the marker for oxygen glucose deprivation. We collected the cells and we cultured, we um, uh, isolated the cell lysates, we prepared cell lysates and um, sorry, and we prepared RNA, we isolated RNA from those cells. Then we took RNA and we ran RT PCR. We found that HIF 1 alpha is increased in the cells. So RNA in HIF-1 alpha increment indicates that oxygen glucose deprivation is occurred. And uh, we also confirmed uh, exosomes, uh, hypoxic exosomes and the OGD induced exosomes, uh, presence of exosomes by CD63 Western blots. So by these bands, we can say that your exosomal content uh, is correct you have exosomes in your solution and uh, you have uh, oxygen glucose deprivation undergone cells there only there from only you collected the cells so we confirmed everything we have three samples they are perfect we have exosomes in that and how to induce stroke this is a big challenge middle cerebral artery occlusion is the procedure where you have to uh, anesthetize the rat with isoflurane continuously, 2 to 5% of isoflurane. We used only 2% isoflurane, other 98% is uh, oxygen. And we anesthetized the rat, opened the neck region, and exposed the common carotid artery, clamped it to avoid blood flow to further region. And we also exposed external carotid artery and also internal carotid artery. We uh, tightly um, uh, placed a knot with a um, uh, thread uh, on one side of the external carotid artery and a loose knot between the junction of internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. We, we made a loose knot and the internal carotid artery was clamped with arterial clamp to avoid blood flow. Then we opened the, we cut the middle region between tight knot and loose knot, and we introduced the mono silicon rubber coated monofilament suture through this uh, cut. So from here, the filament will traverse and traverse, traverse like this. So here, this is a, uh, uh, sorry. This is common carotid artery. This is external carotid artery. This is internal carotid artery. And we introduced the filament until the middle cerebral artery. I'm reminding you, rat is still alive in this experiment. And then after the filament traversed through middle cerebral artery, we tightened this loose knot into very tight. We took out all the clamps out so we reinstated the blood flow normally. So internal carotid artery, arterial clamp, common carotid artery, arterial clamp is taken out. This is the real scenario. It is taken from microscope. This is a microscopic surgery. We can't uh, see the blood vessels normally in the brain. Uh, you just need to uh, do this surgery by seeing through microscope. So internal carotid artery, external carotid artery and common carotid arteries and they inserted the filament. This whole story, we can, after anesthetizing the rat to end of this experiment uh, surgery, we will take only 10 to 15 minutes to complete it. After completion, 
the neck region skin is stapled and the rat is placed in its original box. So the question arises, hey, you did the experiment. Then what you are doing? After placing the filament, we will remain the rat alive for two hours. After two hours, again, we will anesthetize and reopen it, take out the filament and re-perfuse the brain. So we induce two hours of ischemia, means two hours uh, we block the oxygen and glucose supply to the brain cells. After two hours, we taken out the filament and uh, sutured back the rat and rat is still alive. That means we gave TPA, we cleaved the clot and we reinforced the uh, blood flow, means we induced reperfusion. So we induced stroke, we mimicked TPA therapy, that's, that's the rat we have now. After one day of reperfusion, after 24 hours, we sacrificed it and we stained with TTC, triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride, and TTC, when there is live cells, it enters into the cells. The enzyme pr present in the live cells will convert TTC into formazan, which is a stain, a uh, red color stain, insoluble red color stain. That's the re reason live cells will be stained this red color, will be stained with this red color. Whereas in stroke-induced brains, because there is no live cells, the enzymes are not there, TTC could not stain the brain cells. This indicates the infarcted area, dead cell area. So we can, we could confirm, yes, we achieved it. We got stroke for the rats, but uh, we want something uh, other than this. Can we do the surgery, always sacrifice and do TTC staining and see whether there is stroke or not? It's not a feasible option. Initially, it can be a good option, but uh, for experimental basis, we can't use this. So what we did is uh, we want live rats uh, with stroke. So we, we found some tests. One of the tests is open field test. In open field test, rat can walk through normally in a straight line as of whatever it wants. It can turn into any, other, any, uh, any ways, it can walk straight just freely. But in case of ischemia induced uh, reperfused rat, it will be having disability on front limb and fore limb. So it will be circling to one side. So circling behavior is one of the indication of stroke. Second, when you hold the tail, normal rat, four limbs will be parallel to each other. But in case of stroke induced rat, this is the affected limb, stroke affected limb it can't able to extend and touch the floor. Only one arm will be uh, extending obviously every time. Third test is beam walk. We trained the rats before surgery uh, on a beam of one meter. The rat can walk through uh, one side to another with just like two, two seconds to five minutes time depending on its interest. But overall it's grip strength, motor coordination, walking, is perfect. When it is when you have stroke induced rat due to lack of grip strength, lack of coordination, four limb is down, it can't able to walk through. Sometimes it fall down, sometimes it just hugs the beam and remain at the same position. These three tests indicate stroke is induced. So we tested with these uh, um, uh, tests. We if there is no uh, any of these uh, Symptoms, we excluded the rat. If the rat passed all these tests, we included in the, in our study. So neurological evaluations, we want to do, we want to see, but uh, with injection, injecting the exosomes, different exosomes. So how we did it? Before uh, three days of the surgery, we trained the rats to walk on the beam, uh, to sticky tape, to be uh, well performed. Because if you don't train the rat uh, to walk on a beam, it, can, it doesn't know that it has to walk. So we trained for everything. Then we did surgery, which I described earlier. Two hours, we induced ischemia. After two hours, we took out the filament and uh, induced reperfusion. 
after immediately immediately after reperfusion intravenously we administered the exosomes so one group of 10 rats received normal exosomes another group of 10 rats uh, received a hypoxic exosomes and the last group of 10 rats received oxygen glucose deprivation collected exosomes and uh, one day later we utilized and we uh, did ttc straining uh, test uh, straining for uh, six rats and the other rats of 10 uh, we also did uh, for ttc staining for some rats on day 3 and other group of 10 rats were used for neurological evaluations so totally here 30 rats for ttc staining here 30 rats for euthanasia ttc staining on day 3 and 30 rats uh, for neurological evaluations so we did uh, neurological tests um we did ttc staining we found that uh, normal exosomes could not show any significant difference there is little bit reduction in uh, brain swelling um but there is no much uh, significant difference uh in in terms of uh, swelling so we we want to have more we don't want uh, a little bit of uh, uh changes we tested with uh, uh oxygen glucose deprivation treated exosomes we found that there is a significant difference see infarct size is reduced brain swelling is reduced there we got interest wow we got something in our lab we we got a great result uh so what we did is we to, as i told 30 rats were used for mnss 10 rats with the normal exosomes treated 10 rats with hypoxic exosomes treated 10 rats with uh, uh oxygen glucose deprivation uh, exosomes treated we tested for mnss test what is mnss test mnss test is modified neurological severity score test this test uh, is a battery of several tests it tests the motor functions it tests the sensory functions it tests the reflex it tests the balance everything we can test uh then while well, i will show you some of the tests how we did it um let me <coughs> this is a uh, uh, open field test when we leave the rat in open field what happens is normal rat can walk through normally see the stroke induced rat is circling here because of its disability it can't walk straight so it will be circling to its uh, normal uh, the, the normal pie is assisting it to move this side the other pie is uh, not having uh motor function ability its abilities are lost here so it is circling if any rat is circling we will score it to if any rat is uh, having paralysis and uh, fall down to a particular side then we will not use the rat that's a severe stroke we don't want severe stroke because survival rate is barely possible we want to test this rat for 7 uh, 7 days to 14 days so we decided to go with moderate stroke so it is circling here so it will be getting some points and um, another test is uh, placement of on the beam balancing on the beam what happens is when you place the uh, rat on a beam see here due to its disability uh the hind limb disability it could not able to uh walk through the beam and balance on the beam it is struggling to balance that's the problem with this sometimes due to heavy stroke it will fall down immediately um and majority of the times fore limb and uh, hind limb disabilities can't allow it to walk through or balance on the beam properly so it will be hugging the beam with the other two limbs and uh, stay on the same uh, uh, area so we will score it if it falls down we will give a score of 6 if it falls down within a certain period of time 5 like that if it stays on balance on the beam we will give 0 
Six is the worst, zero is the best. Zero means normal rat. Six is worst stroke-induced rat. So here, uh, this is a kind of sensory test. If you test, uh, touch the vibrisse, nothing but uh, the whiskers onto the bench, uh, by sensing the platform is there, the rat has to place its uh, paw onto the uh, platform. Normal rat can do that. Immediately, if you touch the whiskers, it can place it. But in stroke-induced rat, majority of the times, it can't place it. Uh, even you force it also, barely out of 100, one or two times it can do that. <clears throat> the other, uh, uh, many times, it will not be able to perform properly. So we did this test. The score is ranges from 0 to 18. As uh, 1 to 6 is a more mild stroke, 6 to 12 is a moderate stroke, and 12 to 18 is severe stroke, acute and severe stroke. So we chose moderate stroke. So initially there is zero. If any rat is not performing well, we'll exclude it. If any rat uh, has some problems, we exclude it. Those rats which can able to perform only, we taken, we did surgery. After one day, you could see that significant stroke is observed in both cases. This is uh, uh, no treatment received group. This is normal exosomes received group. In both cases, stroke is prominent. But after testing so many days until seven days, there was no significant difference in MNS score. This story is about normal exosomes. When we injected hypoxic and OGD induced exosomes, this is the uh, vehicle treated uh, group. Compared to that, there is a, a big difference with uh, hypoxic treated exosomes, but it is not significant. Whereas in case of oxygen glucose deprivation uh, uh, condition uh, associated exosomes, they could able to prevent the stroke induced damage and significant difference was observed over seven days. From starting one day to seven days, we could see a significant difference compared to a control group. This control group is having worse symptoms. This is markedly improved over a period of seven days. That was a great um, uh, encouragement for us at the time. We also did a beam walk test. Uh, as I told you, we will train the rat to walk through from one end to another end. And this is the stroke induced rat. Uh, what happened is this rat can't able to stay because of its hind limb disability and uh, front limb disability. You can see it fall down immediately. That's the difference between normal rat and a stroke induced rat. Stroke induced rat normally, due to depending on its disability, it will fall down or it will just hug the beam and won't move at all from one, another, one end to another end. So this, uh, depending on its uh, ability, if it fall down, we'll give a score of six. If it could walk through from one end to another end freely, we will give a score of zero. Zero to six, uh, we'll be grading it one, two, three, four, five, six, according to the protocol. So six is the worst because it fall down immediately. That means it has a great disabilities due to stroke. So what we observed here, in normal exosomes treated group, there was no significant difference. Even normal exosomes treated uh, group was worst um, compared to uh, the uh, vehicle treated group. So there was no significant difference between them. Whereas a control group compared with uh, uh, oxygen glucose deprivation um, culture um, secreted exosomes, they could show a significant improvement uh, from day one itself compared with the hypoxic exosomes. There is a difference with hypoxic, but not statistically significant. Here we could see that there is a marked improvement. So we could see this uh, beam walking test, test the uh, motor coordination, because uh, if you want to walk on a straight line, your motor coordination, balance, and uh, mobility must be perfect. Otherwise, it can't be possible normally to walk through on that uh, straight line. So we could see that there is a marked improvement uh, when we treated the stroke-induced rats with uh, 
oxygen glucose deprivation uh, cultured secreted exosomes then we also tested with uh, uh, sticky tape test this is a sensory test what we do is we will apply a, a tape onto the paw of the rat both affected paw and uh, unaffected paw because stroke when we induce stroke uh, on the right side left side for paw will be affected if you induce stroke on left side right side paw will be affected we induce stroke on right side so left side paw is affected all, always so what happens in normal rats uh, normal rats how they uh, respond to as a tape if you tape its paw how it will respond see this see it is a, uh, um, trying to remove the test remove the tape on the paw so what we will do is we have two timers we will switch on two timers at the first attempt when the rat starts the first attempt there the two timers will be started one of the timer will be continuously running the other timer will be uh, running when and where only uh, the rat tries to remove it or rat attempts the tape this will run around 30 second um, continuously and uh, the other timer will only run whenever the rat is attempting to remove the tape so here uh, in case of stroke induced rat you can see a larger difference see here it had a first attempt and uh, this timer is off this timer will be continuously moving see the even we applied tape on its forelimb it is unable to attempt it because of loss of sensory functions so this this uh, timer is still continuously going on um, and 30 seconds we will evaluate and we will see how many seconds the rat attempted to remove the tape. So stroke induced rats can't able to attempt much. So here only five seconds it could attempt in 32 seconds of time. <clears throat> we will uh, uh, record the uh, unaffected limb on the right side and we will also record the affected limb scores and we will uh, plot a graph um, we plotted a graph to observe the differences in, in sensory function uh, in case of sensory uh, ability even normal um, exosomes uh, could not able to even perform like um, the uh, vehicle treated rats even vehicle treated rats could improve a little bit but normal exosomes treated uh, rats could not show any any improvement at all in case of uh, uh, ogd treated rats when compared with the uh, vehicle treated rats ogd treated exosomes treated rats could improve a lot from day one itself there was a significant difference between the performance of the treated rats and the untreated rats. So we could uh, conclude that um, you don't uh, uh, believe in exosome secretion as and when uh, you receive it. You mimic the condition where you culture the stem cells, you collect the exosomes, they are more beneficial. So here we conclude that exosomes isolated from stroke mimicking conditions are having greater therapeutic efficacy in terms of improving neurological functions. Exosomes isolated from normal uh, hypoxic uh, cultural conditions, they could improve, uh, hypoxic condition uh, exosomes could improve, but not statistically significant improvement observed. Whereas in normal exosomes treatment, we could not see much uh, improvement. So we we conclude here, where whatever is the condition you are testing, if you mimic that condition and collect the exosomes from stem cells, they are having greater therapeutic efficacy. And we published this work in Cellular Physiology and Biochemistry uh, last year and uh, Neuromolecular Medicine uh, uh, my work and I would like to acknowledge uh, my mentor friend Dr. Krishna Virwali uh, who is having a 1.2 million dollars uh, national grant right now and um, 
he's my great friend and mentor i would like to thank him a lot and also um, our collaborator neurosurgery head, uh, head of neurosurgery dr klafenstein um head of neurology dr david wang and uh, pathologist dr david pinson and my two master students who my mentored aishwarya and aditya uh, under my supervision thank you thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to sri venkateswara college of management uh, as well uh, dr nagoji garu uh, for giving me this great opportunity to deliver and share my research knowledge to you all thank you thank you dr koteswara garu uh, you have same sun time sir hello thank you koteswara sir yeah thank you uh, you have given very uh, uh, wonderful and informative and elaborate talk regarding this uh, stroke how to manage that one how to um, isolate the exosomes and the treatment with the exosomes i hope this is very very useful to all because nowadays all are suffering from the uh, stroke uh, um, stroke that is the leading uh, cause of death also nowadays so how to treat the stroke regarding all these things you have explained very well thank you goteswara garu now i request uh, uh, d prasant for a question and answer session over to prasant hello uh, Uh, Prasant. Uh, sir, I shall follow. We will post the some uh, questions asked by participants, sir. Okay. 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 Sir, uh, a nice uh, session, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, participants are asking that uh, what extent this exosomes are preferable than anticoagulants. uh we are not proposing uh, uh alternative therapy we wanted to propose a combination therapy instead we wanted to we wanted to administer tpa first after tpa cleaves the clot simultaneously we want to introduce exosomes into the uh, um brain of the human and we wanted to retrieve back the lost functions and rejuvenate retrieve back the dead cells we don't want to avoid tpa we want to use okay. TPA. we want to okay. prescribe tpa uh, as uh, we discussed with our neurosurgery head and neurology head we want to inject tpa or we want uh, they they will do the thrombectomy or whatever is the procedure to remove the clot after removal we want to inject exosomes because exosomes has to reach the target site if there is clot we they can't able to reach there so we want to remove the clot then we want to facilitate the exosome therapeutic effects okay yes, thank you sir and another question is uh, can we use for uh, post stroke conditions like how post stroke conditions can be estimated is also another question sir we have uh, several tests to assess the post stroke conditions um, there are uh, national guidelines and tests like here we did mnss uh, test 0 to 18 so 1 to 6 uh, is a uh, mild stroke 7 to 12 is moderate 13 to 18 is severe stroke so based on that uh, um we can give to any patient uh, for treatment we can we wanted to because we wanted to suggest treatment to any kind of patient but we are not sure in acute strokes this exosomes can survive because exosomes need certain time period to repair the cells it requires like at least a week or 10 days continuous treatments um, so we can confidently tell that at least we can retrieve back in mild to moderate stroke patients but still we are working uh, with a uh, severe stroke but we are facing survival problems um they can't able to survive even 3 to 5 days that's our uh what we called as research technical difficulties are in front yeah okay sir 
so another question is uh, uh, which parts of brain are generally affected in ischemic stroke cortex by some students yes cortex cortex region cortex. Okay. is the major area where uh, several uh, strokes middle cerebral artery is in majority of ischemic strokes major, middle cerebral artery is occluded normally so middle cerebral artery occlusion first affected part is cortex after that it will be propagated to other areas that's the re reason in ischemic stroke we could see loss loss of functions in hand uh, face legs those are the problems sir uh, is exosomes cause any complications in other systems that we have to uh, test uh, confirm the toxicology right now we are only concentrating on therapeutic benefits okay. even though they can cause some side every drug has its own uh, benefit and uh, uh, adverse effects so risk versus benefit in case of uh, risk versus benefit we believe exosomes are having more benefit is even triple or four quadruple benefit compared to its adverse effects there may be little adverse effects but we haven't tested yet okay also padma sri any more questions yes sir yes sir, yes sir one hmm. more question is there is any dose can be fixed for exosomes like uh, still it is, it is under yeah. clinical trials only yeah. otherwise yeah. any dose is uh, we have uh, uh, okay. the dose level uh, okay, we sir. are we are now what where we are now is we are trying to analyze the mirna long non coding rnas and uh, the the micro array analysis we are doing right now after finding uh, uh, what are the exact beneficial factors inside those exosomes we want to take out that concentrated cream out of it and we want to propose the treatment so we don't want even to uh, uh, inject the whole content of exosomes we want to further uh, uh, search for the uh, perfect reasonable factors responsible for this uh, uh, therapeutic benefit we want to take out them and we want to propose the therapy okay sir thank you sir uh, that many Any questions more? only no questions sir. no more Any? questions hmm okay okay madam okay yeah. yeah. just one just again um, uh, thank you nagaji garu uh, no, long sorry. time i am in front of you maybe yeah. i joined in barampur 2000 i guess yes yeah, yes yes so so i am very very thankful to you kode sir you have though you are very busy with your schedule there you accepted my request and uh, uh, today you gave a wonderful uh, speech very 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 thankful to you thank you sir thank you for giving me this opportunity okay. thank you padma sri and uh, thank you rajeshwari kishor garu thank you Pad padma sri madam yes sir what a what a thank you okay sir thank you sir dr koteshwara garu for your valuable in and informative and novel uh, talk and thank you very much for your sp uh, for spending of your valuable time with us and i especially thank our management organizing team our faculty members and the participants for their kind cooperation and uh, tomorrow we will we'll have the third day webinar session by dr shiva s panda associate professor department of chemistry Augusta University Augusta Georgia USA on rational approaches in drug design so by this we can uh, end today's session thank you very much and we will meet tomorrow at 4 with the third day session at 4 pm thank Bye. you thank you thank you sir thank, thank you very thank much thank you thank you sir thank you yeah.